This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Person of interest to named in murder of United Kingdom woman. Halfway three police detectives have listed a Clarendon man as a person of interest in the murder of a foreign resident in St. Andrew. The victim, 29-year-old Safia Davy, a Jamaican living in the United Kingdom, was found dead at a house on Graydon Avenue in Kingston 10 on Monday. The police say about 11.30 a.m., a property manager found Davy inside the bathroom and summoned the police. Her bloodied body was face down. The police say the person of interest, Leighton Delahaye of James Hill District, Clarendon, should immediately report to the Halfway Tree Criminal Investigation Branch. Police to turn up heat on scammers. Head of the Jamaica Constabulary Force Area 1 Division, Assistant Commissioner of Police Clifford Chambers, says that persons involved in the illicit lottery scamming trade can expect to face intense heat in the coming weeks as the government moves to eradicate the deadly scars on the country. The lottery scam or advance fee fraud is estimated to illegally rake in over U.S. $300 million to the Jamaican economy annually. According to Chambers, this new round of assault by security forces on the illegal activity will result in more than arrest and a prosecution. There will also be a heavy and a concentrated focus on relieving the culprits of assets acquired from scamming. He said that the Lottery Scam Task Force is actively working with the major organized crime and anti-corruption agency and the specialized teams in the police divisions of Trelawney, St. James, Hanover and Westmoreland. Those efforts, Chambers noted, will be bolstered by the Joint Task Force, whose mandate also includes the disruption of lottery scamming activities. In another week or so, there will be a lot of operations targeting scammers, and there is also the trickle of impact of those as well. We are going after their assets, said ACP Chambers in an interview with reporters in Hanover. He said a major player was arrested in Westmoreland last week, and that several other police divisions have been making progress to rein in the fraudsters. The lottery scam came to public attention in 2006 after young men in Granville St. James started raking in big bucks by convincing mostly elderly Americans that they had won a lottery but had to pay a processing fee to have the prize of money released. Within months, persons in other communities joined the act, and before long, several young men throughout St. James Westmoreland Hanover and Trelawney, without legitimate sources of income, were lighting up the social circuit, driving high-end vehicles and building mansions. As the number of players increased in the lottery scam, communities throughout the western region were transformed into killing fields as competition for loot turned into deadly rivalry involving the notorious Stonecrusher gang, which demanded a percentage from each scammer or certain death. These actions have contributed to Western Jamaica becoming the most murderous region in the country over the past 15 years. Meanwhile, Minister of National Security Dr. Harris Chang praised the justice system for imposing appropriate sentences for scammers. I see a few judges taking the sentencing regime a little bit different with these characters. I appreciate that it is their discretion, but I think their sensitivity to the challenge is increasing, Chang said. He also reiterated the vast challenges faced by the police as those involved in scamming are no longer operating in urban areas but migrate into deep rural areas across the island. Outside of the traffic in downtown Montego Bay, the National Security Minister argued that it is now a safe place to commute. But when you hear of Warsaw, wait a bit, Troy Trelawney, Adelphi, Chelsea, Cambridge and the Copperhood in St. James, these are all deep rural areas and we know it's because the lottery scammers have found their way there, Chang noted. He said the security forces are working to prosecute migrating criminals and that the government is committed to giving them more resources this year because the fight against this particular crime requires more human and technical resources for them to be able to deal with the thing, which is part of the whole emerging cyber activities that is the real threat. When pressed as to whether security forces will be able to keep up with criminals in light of the government's plan in developing the technological footprint of the country, Chang said the government will not allow criminals to disrupt its drive towards economic growth and prosperity. We have to move in that direction 
and we are going there with the broadband services we are about to offer across the island in getting into our schools and so forth. We have to prepare our security forces for it. That's what we are doing now because that is where the threat is moving, he stated. Vaccination message not being reinforced, says MEJ. The Medical Association of Jamaica says Jamaicans appear to be of the view that vaccination against the COVID-19 is no longer necessary and that the government's actions are reinforcing this belief. MAJ President Dr. Brian James notes that Jamaica is in danger of facing a possible surge in cases due to the Omicron BA2 subvariant as only 24% of the population is vaccinated. He says that while the Ministry of Health is still carrying out vaccinations, the message to Jamaicans is not being reinforced. I am aware that there's still activity in that direction going on within the Ministry of Health, but this, somehow the message seems to be getting through to the population that there's no need to be vaccinated anymore. Certainly in terms of even when the Omicron wave came, there were people who were saying, this is mild, so we can do whatever we want. We even perpetuated this message by sending the children out to school during, you know, sort of 60 to 70 percent positivity. So what it says to the population is, you know, fair not. The Ministry of Health announced last Thursday that it had confirmed the presence of the highly transmissible Omicron BA2 variant in Jamaica. The variant was confirmed in two of 89 gene sequencing samples analyzed from January 1 to March 4. They were tested at the National Influenza Center at the University Hospital of the West Indies. Truckers are frustrated by delays at the Kingston Freeport Terminal. Lengthy delays at the Kingston Freeport Terminal have left the truckers frustrated and calling for the authorities to address the slow process for retrieving cargo. The truckers waited in long lines for hours on Monday morning, causing traffic snarls on Marcos Garvey Drive. The truckers say it is taking up to four hours to clear a container instead of the normal 30 to 45 minutes. Barzell Wright, president of the Port Trail Haulage Association, says the delay is causing truckers to miss deadlines and lose money. Over and over, time and time, year after year, we have been having these challenges. We have been always been in dialogue with the KFTL management and we, are, we have been expecting changes. I will not see it forthcoming any at all, right? For two weeks now, it, is like, it has been like this. The numbers were done a few weeks ago and we were having similar challenges. And we, are, we are asking for them to just look into the challenges and see our best they can make it better for us. Our drivers have been suffering two, three hours at a time, four hours since the past two weeks at given times, and the, the drivers get paid by trips. Mr. Wright urged the entity to look into the challenges and to see how best that they can make it better for us. Person of interest interrogated in ATM explosion, cops sees another being sought. The police say they have already interrogated one person of interest and are seeking another in connection with Saturday's explosion at a Scotia Bank in Port Antonio, Portland. At the same time, the police say an audit is being done to determine how much money was taken. We have various stakeholders involved in the investigations actively pursuing some leads. We already have one person of interest. That person has already been interviewed and we are seeking one other person of interest, Clayton March, the acting assistant commissioner of police in charge of crime, said. Acting ACP March said it is still early days in the investigations, but based on the pace, he is optimistic that a breakthrough will be made shortly. What I can tell the public is that it is an act of arson and investigations are proceeding along that line. We are putting together some pieces and are seeking additional clues that are coming slowly but we are optimistic that it is a one-off case of arson, he added. He said the police cannot say definitively the amount of money that has been taken. An audit is currently being carried out, he said. A security guard who was injured in the explosion is still being questioned by the police. A section of a Scotia bank which houses two automated telemachines was destroyed in the explosion heard at approximately 4.10 a.m. on Saturday. On arrival, officers observed the fire and the smoke coming from the front of the building. 
Further investigations revealed that the two ATMs were also destroyed during the explosion. JPS workers agitated as a witch talks drag on. The Union of Clerical Administrative and Supervisory Employees says the workers at the Jamaica Public Service are running out of patience as the wage negotiations with the company drag on. The union represents technical and administrative workers as well as executive assistants. John Levy, General Secretary of UK's, said negotiations started a year and a half ago but no progress has been made and there appears to be no end in sight as the company's demands have crippled negotiations. The negotiations have started, and let me put they have started in context, is that for the technical and administrative group, those negotiations have been going on for the better part of a year and a half now, with apparently no end in sight. The union has been very patient. We have been sort of going around in circles now. The company is making demands from the workers to give up their benefits in order to get a wage increase. And quite frankly, you know, there has been a veiled threat to say that, look, if you do not do X, then you won't get what we regard as a reasonable adjustment to challenge this kind of inflation that we've been facing over here. The last financial year was 11.9%. The calendar year was somewhere about 10% there about. And what is on the table now to the workers is, is unacceptable. And I don't know, even Job ran out of patience. And we are in what we would regard now as some very, very choppy waters. And I just want to say to the management and to the board that, look, the workers have suffered long enough and I don't know how much more they can take. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.